This is how I got a gold crate in TDS. These are the most expensive crates in the game, costing 50,000 coins. Over my years of playing this game, I've collected 4 of the 6 available skins. And with around 46,000 coins, I decided to grind out the penultimate gold skin, to be able to use a fully golden loadout. In this first game, things immediately went wrong, as I encountered an in-game glitch which would not let me place any towers, so I decided to utilize the recently added rejoining feature. I left the match in wave 3, and after loading back into the lobby, using Using the rejoin button and waiting a while, I did join back. Unfortunately, it was now 11 waves later, but I now was actually able to place towers, so things went well. I brought the strongest loadout I had with farm, DJ, and some solid DPS towers. I got my farms to level 3, and before maxing them, I got the DJ's discount ability to save money on said upgrades, a strategy I would employ for pretty much all these runs. And since I would need a lot of wins to get enough coins, I tried to speedrun the best as I could. Spamming level 5 accelerators, which in combination with my team's minigunners and pyromancers, lent us a quick multi win. For the next game, I had switched my loadout around, but that was nothing compared to my new teammates, as the three of them were level 1, 3, and 1 respectively, which obviously meant they didn't have very good towers. So I adopted a similar strategy to the previous game, but now using gold crit boss for defense, of course along with plenty of scouts for my teammates, and then maxing my farms. The vast amount of scouts placed was actually pretty helpful, as it let me lean much more heavily into the eco, although they did take up a lot of space, and transitioning into the late game, their effects started to be negligible. I placed quick faster than accelerators in the available space, along with one Rocketeer, a terrible tower I decided to use for really no reason. Although the first half of the game was pretty slow, we ended up steamrolling the ladder end, easily killing the Molten boss, and getting another 500 coins. I only played Molten mode one more time. My team had their own early game defense, so I decided to focus almost exclusively on farming, getting all my farms to level 5 by only wave 23. And with the general strength of towers we had in DJs, Excels, Maze, and Rangers, we easily triumphed, earning another 500 your coins. Since Molten was going so well, I wanted to step things up a bit with a Fallen Rand for the slightly increased rewards. So I got into a quad up game on Toy Board, with one high level teammate, one level 0 teammate, and one somewhere in between. Due to how much less money you get in Fallen, maxing farms wasn't really an option with low level teammates, so I only looked to get them to level 3. I also bounced out with Gold Crook bosses, and my teammates had some decently good towers in Golden Cowboy and Power Mancer. We cruised through the first 29 waves, but I knew that the tank on wave 30 would be a big test. At this point, we now had a lot of accelerators and I'd bought a commander, using its call of arms ability as a zombie spawn. And although it did reach pretty far along the path, it still did die. So from there, I continued to place accelerators, upgrading them one by one, while my teammate went for blank dead upgrades. And upon reaching wave 40, me and my teammates spammed commander's ability, and even though the path was somewhat short, with 16 accelerators, we did manage to win, getting another 700 coins. The increased rewards from Fall Mode made it feel more worthwhile, so I got into another trio game on Portland. My team was pretty focused on farming, so I was tasked with the defending early, using a simple gold crook. Someone had brought a military base, and because of how ridiculously long the Portland map is, the tower worked pretty well, as a lot of them could continuously spawn due to how long they took to reach the front of the map. And this became relevant as on wave 15 we leaked a ton of shadows, and we had to rely on those military bases to save us. And from there things went very well, as we easily killed the tank, I brought engineer, but I only ended up placing a few of them, due to how expensive they are compared to accelerator. And overall it was a pretty straightforward win, with the fallen king not even getting to the halfway point of the map. So after getting that win, I ran back another fallen game on Abyssal Trench. Yet again, with only 3 out of 4 players. I had brought Golden Soldier, and one of my teammates had brought Regular Soldier. Very good synergy, which got us past the abnormal boss and hiddens. But I knew the fallings would be a problem, but I farmed as much as I could, and got a level 3 Golden Mini on wave 20, which combined with some other towers, did succeed in killing the fallings. From there, I once again returned to farming, before placing a lot of level 3 Gold Minis, to hopefully kill the tank on wave 30. And with the help of Call of Arms, we actually actually did kill it. With that last major obstacle out of the way, things were going well, except for the fact that my team was skipping every wave. Things did start to get a bit tougher, but luckily they soon stopped and focused on placing minis, military bases, and commanders. And even though a lot of space hadn't been taken by farms, luckily the DJ's range was big enough for me to fit all my accelerators into it. And in wave 40, we did triumph. I was now within a thousand coins of the goal, so I got into what I hoped would be my final fallen game. It was a trio game, but with one player being level 0, it was more so a duo game actively becoming so when our third left around wave 30. I brought Gladiator for early game defense this time, and after farming I got a DJ and started focusing on placing mini gunners. And although it was very close, we did take out the tank. Golden mini is very good and with a solid eco 
was set up, it seemed as though we were destined to at least make it to wave 40, but there is one huge problem. My teammate had a serious fixation on skipping every single wave, spawning even more zombies, but we were still struggling on the initial wave. It got to a point where he had skipped a wave he had just skipped from another wave to get to. I tried asking him to stop, but he decided against it. And even on the best of runs, skipping this lane into the game is a very bad idea. And in this run, where the main DPS was only some golden minis, we had almost no chance. And we lost in wave 36. I mean 37. That last minute skip got us a few extra coins, awarding 523 total. So I just played a quick solo fallen game, bringing a questionable loadout with paintballer, where I actually somehow managed to reach the exact same wave, getting another 523 coins. Which was finally enough to buy the golden crates. Alright, so I now have the coins that I need. 50k. Stay on the drain. The only two options I have are Cowboy and Pyromancer. And... Golden Pyro. Not bad. So I ended up getting Golden Pyromancer, and although I would prefer Cowboy just for the variety, I think Pyro is probably the better tower. But to prove it, I grabbed all 5 of my Golden Towers to rank them individually, and see if they could win Fallen on their own. Golden Pyromancer definitely has some major improvements over the regular variant, which I saw as they placed it on Wave 2. Mainly, it gains Hin Detection from level 0, along with an actual damage stat. It also has the upside that, unlike many other Golden Skins, the prices of upgrades aren't increased. Its damage is very good for the early game, and placed in conjunction with a Gold scout we easily handled the first 10 waves but while most of these golden towers are very good on their own when all in one loadout with no support the synergy just isn't very good i tried getting one of everything but i was notably lacking any form of money generation which was especially problematic considering the increased cost of these golden towers i took down the boss and the hiddens pretty easily but i knew that i would need high level minigunners or quick bosses for the falls and instead i had gotten a level 2 gold soldier and a level 3 gold scout the first wave of fallen's bear ended up dying to the quick boss's bodyguards, the second set was too much, causing me to lose in wave 22. So finally, now having 5 of the 6 gold towers, I made a definitive worst to best ranking. First off, the worst golden tower would have to be gold soldier. It still has soldier's limiting gimmick of burst shots, and for early game defense, golden scout, quick boss, or gladiator are just better. And speaking of scout, I would put it next. I think it's an overall good tower for the early game defense, but it feels outclassed by golden quick boss, which also does very well in the early game, but it's generally more viable later on. And next I would put Pyromancer. I haven't used it much so this might change with time but it is decently strong early and its armor melting effect is very helpful. I would say the second best golden tower is Quirk Boss. As I said being very viable in the early game but also being strong enough to actually contribute to the late game. The bodyguards are also a nice addition which can snowball in numbers over time. And then the best golden tower I would still say is Golden Minigunner. Having very high stats and a much better cost to DPS ratio than other high tier towers like Accelerator or Engine. Engineer. Its range is good even initially, and with no placement limit, it's easily spammable too. So yeah, that's how I got my second to last golden crate. This did take a while, so consider subscribing.